A lot of interest in you. I am here all the time. It's a wonderful change from Toronto, as you might well assume. Huh? East, it's so free here. The news is never so bad. I spend time in Prince Edward Island. Listen to the radio station, you listen to the lead story. PEI and Charlton guys says, and in the lead story today, in an act of random violence, the side mirror has been ripped off a parked car. <laughs> Police are investigating. Then they interview the cop. Oh, we've got a few leads, we're working on it. Back to the guy, he says, and now on the lighter side, because, geez, you're going to need a lighter side <laughs> after something that harsh has been just thrown at you. <laughs> you don't want that pinballing through your brain at work all. <laughs> just the, the memory of that, that lonely mirror arm sticking out of the car. <laughs> Sign of a world gone crazy. <laughs> it's a terrific laugh, man. We're going on tour. Somebody's frightened. No, she's happy. Uh, I love the traffic report, too, especially coming out of Toronto. I'm stuck in that big town for a while. But the traffic report in PEI is so great. The guy introduces the, now the traffic girl. Now with the traffic, here's Kathy. And she actually came on and she said, pretty busy out there. Best be careful. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm just howling in the car. I love this place. And the, and the guy, the guy says, he thanks her, eh? Thank you, Kathy, thank you. <laughs> like he's got to appreciate the work that went into that. You, you, you've left no stone unturned. That was... <laughs> we got to get you a helicopter, sweetie. You are working the fingers to the bone. <laughs> the farthest east I ever was, and this is just a few weeks ago, I made it as far as, uh, as England, you know? And uh, that, was, that was so weird. Uh, they're having a lot of troubles over there. And some of them deservedly with their livestock. They had mad cow disease because they started feeding them meat. What the hell? You, you can't do that to a cow. You can't feed a vegetarian meat. <laughs> Naturally, they're gonna lose it. <laughs> it's got a mess with his psyche. Five years, the cow's eating grass. All of a sudden, the farmer booting out of the barn, hey, you got to try this hamburger. <laughs> Holy Jesus, that's delicious. <laughs> where do you get that stuff? That is the G. Where, where's that leg go? Didn't I have another leg here? <laughs> so now the, the poor cow's starting to think maybe he's a carnivore. That's why they go crazy. <laughs> a, a cow doesn't make a very effective predator. <laughs> Think it over in your head. There's no such thing in nature as a rectangular predator. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta be a little more aerodynamic, I think. I'm, I'm just saying it's hard to be stealthy <laughs> with wooden feet, huh? Clunk, 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 clunk. Bell clang, 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 clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> I'm having trouble getting that jackrabbit. Clunk, clunk, clang, clang, clang. I guess so. He sounds like the cast of River Dance going by on a train. He's a little trouble surprising animals. So what they did, I was reading this in the paper. At one point when hoof and mouth struck, that they did, the army is in the paper, it said army is bringing in sharpshooters to, to kill sheep and cows. <laughs> sharpshooters. You gotta wonder, how bad are the regular shooters? <laughs> uh, tracking the unpredictable cow. It's, it's not as though they're coming at you in some zigzag pattern. I, I can't, they're coming in too fast. I can't get a beat. With it. <laughs> it's a cow. You can hunt it with a sledgehammer, for God's sake. They'll bring in a sharpshooter. <laughs> But this, this is lovely. I, uh, when I visit the East, I try and think back and, and within what I've been through in my life that maybe people can relate to. I was on Pogi once. Can anyone? I was on unemployment insurance. I, I cast no dispersions on those who, who have. As a matter of fact, you pay in your whole life. Take a vacation, really. Yeah. I was on it eight months, and I became the resident expert in my hometown. I've had people come up to me. Hey, I'm losing my job. You were on Pogi. What's that like? Well, let, let me recount. You, you don't work, you get paid, 
Pretty close to perfect, really. <laughs> and I found that the only snag to that was human nature. Because the less you're obliged to do to get by, the lazier you get. You, you just adapt. <laughs> All I had to do to survive every second Friday is walk my pokey cars down to the unemployment office and drop them in the bin. So the Thursday night before this, people, I, I can't even sleep. <laughs> oh, 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 I got all that shit to do tomorrow. Oh, oh, there goes my nap. Out the window, there goes my nap. But I think it's fun because it's like a little ping pong game between you and the government, right? They're trying to keep you sharp on your toes. They ask you these penetrating questions. Were you capable of work each day? Yep. Did you work at all? No. <laughs> and the little stuff, you know, any money coming in? Nope. Any inheritance coming in? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, my favorite one, were you ready and willing to work each day? <laughs> what, 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 what? Are they begging you to lie here? <laughs> Has anyone in the history of Canada ever written down the truth? <laughs> just once, just for fun? Nah. <laughs> Th Thursday and Friday, I was way too hungover, man. <laughs> I'd have called in sick for sure. <laughs> I know me. Oh, that's, that's just government lunacy. Ready to work. What do you tell? What do you mean? You're in some town. You have no jobs in a radius of 100 miles, but you don't sleep in in the morning. Oh, no. Not on pogey. <laughs> Up every morning, five o'clock, eh? Grab a shower, get on the work boots and a tie, and just stomp around the house. Holy, <laughs> Holy jump, am I ready to work today? <laughs> I, I better make a lunch just in case. There's a rite of passage into manhood for all Canadians, I think. Most of the fellas, maybe more of the fellas, but going on camping. Camping is just something that's uh, near and dear to me. I've been, uh, I'm from Timmins, Ontario, Cam camping. I've tried to explain camping to Americans when I've been down there. You know, people, come on, you gotta reduce it. You, know? you get a bunch of friends, a whack of booze. <laughs> you go out in the bush, you get back home, you can't quite believe nobody died. <laughs> they made two, four weekend, God save the queen. <laughs> <laughs> And it's nothing you can really be proud of in retrospect, you know. It's underage drinking. There's nobody checking ID in the forest, so off you go. Right? It's, the, it's just decadence. Five, six guys, if we're lucky, we'd have somebody's dad's car. Average age, 16 in the car. There's 22 cases of beer in the trunk. <laughs> just weaseling down the road to a campsite. I love nature. <laughs> you get a fire going pretty good when you're young, drunk, and invincible, huh? Remember those days? You want that sucker stoked 30, 70 feet high. <laughs> we used to want something you could see clearly from space. <laughs> All they could see from up there is the wall of China and whoa, big party in Canada tonight. <laughs> and if they keep watching from up there, they'll see the silhouettes of five or six boneheads jumping over. <laughs> An inferno. Oh. Oh, you don't forget those days. You, you, you can't. It's just, I've hit that age where I could never live through that kind of hangover again, feeling that beat up, waking up in a tent. Ah! Especially when you're a kid, you got no money. It's not a nice tent. I wake up one of them orange triangles, you know, those Canadian Tire Pup Tent bullshit units. That, that just sort of pawn off to the retarded, here you go. That'll keep you safe and warm. Oh, you know, suck it in there. It was just amazing. You get the thing set up, and on the side, it would actually say, water resistant. Oh, oh, yeah. You know what? So is cardboard for a minute. <laughs> you wake up drenched in dew or something. It didn't even rain. Oh, you're, you're just wet. Just feeling betrayed. And then, the, the, oh, well, cuts and bruises, all these surprises, you know, didn't know where burn marks, you got soot stains, you're missing a finger. Aww. Aww. Mom's gonna kill me, look. 
Mosquitoes are walking around the tent floor so full of your blood they can't even fly no more. Uh, 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 buzzing noise. I can't. Uh, 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 thanks so much for reminiscing with me. I've had a wonderful time. Have a great night. Good night. Coming up next, one of Canada's funniest new comics, Tracy McDonald. Then I tried jogging, but I said forget this because my cigarette kept going out. When the Halifax Comedy Fest returns. Catch an all-new episode of Jeff Limited, Saturday at 8.30 on the Comedy Network. Let's get tough. CLR tough. CLR is number one for a...